Hey there, this is Chris Kellett with 123muse.com. We're going to take a look at modifying the Icona menu that we've built in a previous video and adapting it for tablet and phone devices. Now, if you've watched Dan's video on the different navigation types for mobile, you'll understand that the um, bottom or the base of the page on a tablet device or a phone device is a good location for navigation because that has a closer is closer to our thumbs when we're using the devices. So we're going to build a version of the icona menu that sits at the bottom of the page. So I've gone ahead and opened a new site. We start with a blank site and I've added a tablet and a phone view. And to do this I just click on the plus button on the tablet and it'll add the tablet version and the phone version. Then I've gone ahead and I've gone into the two different uh, masters for the phone and tablet and I've just resized the page with the um, guides here. So on the home page here we're going to go and grab the icona widget from the library. So if we go into the add-ons additions 2 and we're looking for the icona dark menu. Let's just drag that onto the page. Now we've already got the phone and tablet versions in there, but as I've said before, it's much better to know how to build these things ourselves from scratch than just use widgets all the time, as useful as they are. And I know that we supply them as well, but we really want you to learn how to do this and build your own. First off, I'm going to delete the submenus because we want this menu to open up from the bottom so we're not going to use the sub menus and from a mobile uh, tablet navigation point of view we want to um, cut down on the amount of options that the user has and just focus on the primary options here so they could n get to those other pages from clicking through to the main page and then we may have some more navigation options on the page itself to resize this to fit the tablet, what we're going to do is we're going to resize the icon here, move this into place, and then move this back. If you want a more precise way of adjusting these, then um, we have um, the all of the settings on the page below this video that you can watch as well. So I think that's about 154 if I remember rightly from my instructions. So there we go, yeah, 154. Okay, so we have our menu. Now let's build the um, pop-up accordion. So we're going to use an accordion widget for this. So let's go to our Muse widgets and we'll grab an accordion, drag that in place. First thing we want to do is reset this. This is very often what we um, have to do with the widgets and hopefully in a future version of Muse uh, we won't have to reset this all manually. So I'm going to clear all these styles. I don't want three tabs, I just want one tab. And I'm going to delete this text here and go to our trigger here and delete the active mouse down roll over, just have the normal state and switch off the border and let's just take a look at the border here there we go so we're all reset here now now I'm going to make the trigger area I'm going to make that 75 so let's dial it into 75 and we'll set the text to center and we will also put some spacing on here. We're going to put 20 pixels of spacing. Let's switch everything else off here. Zero out all of this and set the top spacing to 20. And now we're going to apply our gradient to this. Oops, I did a classic mistake which I've forever saying and recommending to you to make sure we're in the normal state here. So there we go, in the normal state here and set the text to centered. And that's exactly why I say make sure you're in the normal state because there's a tendency to 
choose the active state. So let's add the gradient to this, and there you go, see it's jumped to the active state again. Um, so in the normal state here, I'm going to choose a fill, a gradient, vertical gradient. We're going to choose those colors that we used before, so we've got that nice gradient there. Let's change the text to white. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a small um, burger icon. And because I've got the ions icons installed, I'm just going to use an icon font. So I'm going to select this text here, I'm go to my fonts, and I'm going to choose the ion icons medium, and go to my glyphs, and then scroll down, and I'm going to use this one here, and change, select it, and change the size to see what works maybe 30, 32, yep that works for me. So 32 and then we'll select the bottom section of the accordion and make that black and make sure that, yep that's all good. And then we're just going to stretch this across here. There we go. Now, we want to put this menu in this area here. So, because this is touching the sides here, if we just drag that down, it's not going to sit in there. It's not going to actually go into this area here. So, a little trick that I've learned is if we just resize it smaller for the time being, and now when we drag it down into place, we'll see the blue line pops up to show us that this content is now within the bounds of that area. We can drop it in there. We can resize this out to the sides now. And we can set our icon back here to 154. There we go. And then because this content is sitting in that area there, if we just grab the bottom part of the panel, the content area, and we just drag it up. Look, if I drag it halfway here, watch it snaps to its maximum size here. So it's we don't have to be that precise. We can just drag it there. Okay, let's make sure that this is, there we go. Now if we preview this, so one more thing, I'm gonna make sure that this can close. So I'm gonna click can close all, and then we'll start off with it closed. So whatever state the accordion widget is in when you save it or publish it is what state it'll start off in. So let's preview that. So you can see when we click on the accordion, yes it opens up. That's all great, that's working exactly how we want it. But how do we get it to stick to the bottom of the page? Well we've created a widget that's provided in this pack that you can use. So I'm going to select the accordion here. I'm going to go to my graphic styles and I'm going to add a new style and I'm going to call it pin it okay now that's actually applied a CSS class to this and then we can target it with our widget so if we go back to our widgets here to our library and we're going to drag the pin it widget onto the page and let's just pop it here. Now we can see that which pin it style shall we apply to and we're going to apply it to this pin it. So this widget is going to look for anything that's styled up with the class pin it and it's going to apply the code to it. So and we want to stick that to the bottom. Now when I preview this, this should stick to the bottom. Make sure that we close it before we preview it. Let's hit preview. And there we go. It's sitting at the bottom of our page. And when we click it, it opens up lovely. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, just to prove the point, if I draw a box on here, I'm going to draw a box, rectangle. I'm going to make it bigger here. And then I'm going to put another one here. This is quick and dirty previewing this is, but just to show you, let's uh, send it to the back. And if we hit preview, we can see that our menu stays at the bottom of the page 
Um, actually, we'll make our page a little, little smaller. Yeah, let's make that actually a bit bigger. Let's preview again. Okay. So if we go to, here we go. If we go to our landscape view, we can see we can scroll down the page and our content is sitting behind our menu. And then we can, and this will remain at the bottom of the device screen. So it's always visible and the content will flow behind it, which is exactly what we want. So that works great. So we've got our tablet version of the um, widget. So let's go ahead and copy that and go into our phone view and we'll paste that in and let's move that into place here. Now first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the menu out of the widget and resize it. Okay. Now this is going to be too wide for what we want here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove one of these items to start off with. I'm going to, I'm going to remove the help item here. And then I'm going to duplicate this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the first two of this menu and the second two of this menu and stack the menus on top of each other. So a really simple little trick. We'll just rescale these down so that we can get them into the widget. Let's open this up a bit more. And then we can pop that in there. Right, nudge that up to the top there and drag it to the edge. And we'll make this a little bit bigger. Pop that in there. What I love with Muse as well, it's a very visual way of doing things. So we can just drag things around and until we get them how, exactly how we want them. And we'll drag these icons out. So that should be 190, I think. There we go. Yeah, 190. Let's drag that out. As well. Now let's close this down and preview and we can see our menu is now sitting at the bottom of the mobile screen. Pop it up and we have four buttons there. Oh, there's a bit of a gap there. Let's just modify that. Let's nudge this into place. If you, when you're nudging, if you just hover your mouse over what you're trying to nudge up to, we can see the blue line there signifying where it is so we can just visually move it into place there. Let's uh, close that down again. And then if we go to preview and just hit refresh, I'll reload that page up. So there we go. So now we have this really nice menu with the four buttons, which is more compatible. So we can still keep these buttons nice and big and clear, but there's four there instead. So we've used our Icona menu and just by modifying a, an accordion widget and using our Pinit widget along with it, we've created these really great tablet menus and phone menus. Uh, so we've nearly got an entire set of different widget menus just built out of the Icona. So Thanks for watching and let's move on to build a mega menu in our next video.